Hi, this is Danny Ryan, and this is the Three Will Podcast. And today I've got Eric Bowden here with me. Eric is a principal consultant for Three Will. Did I get that right? You got it. Awesome. Uh, thank you for taking the time to do this, Eric. And I know we're going to talk about a um, an important subject here today, which is uh, how do you do responsive when it comes to SharePoint? And uh, look forward to to learning more about how this actually how you actually make this happen. Um, let's just get this kicked off with sort of how, what do we know to get uh, what do we need to know to get started with this? Um, I, I think to get started with the responsive design in SharePoint, um, you know, my recommendation is really to start with the requirements. So, you know, some folks may decide that okay, I want the entire SharePoint experience to be responsive. Uh, may decide that okay, there are only certain pages that I want to be, you know, able to render on a mobile device because, you know, there are only certain, you know, things that your mobile user are going to want to do. For example, they're not going to commonly, you know, upload content into mm -hmm. SharePoint from their phone. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And, and so um, you're l taking a look at those requirements and then maybe talk me for, through the first couple of steps that you're, you want to think, start thinking about. Yep, yep. So once you have, you know, you have an idea of where you're headed with, um, your responsive design or AKA supporting, you know, mobile and tablet devices in SharePoint. So once you have an idea of where you're going, you know, you're going to start into, you know, sort of planning the implementation phase. Um, and so, you know, the, at, at the highest level, what you're going to need to do in SharePoint is really disable uh, SharePoint's default handling for uh, mobile devices. You know, out of the box, SharePoint includes a feature. It's a mobile uh, redirection uh, site collection scope feature and what it does is redirects you know mobile browsers to what is really a constrained um, uh, presentation of uh, the SharePoint site pages. So you're going to need to disable that because if you don't and you create a mobile design um, it, it will really ultimately ignore your mobile design and it will just go to that redirection page. Is this the same of, I, me, I remember you used to could do like a slash M and it would bring you to a, a page. Yep, uh, yep, yeah. yep okay. very similar. Yep, yep. Okay, same gotcha. thing. Um, you know, another aspect of SharePoint when people are thinking mobile and responsive is a new feature in SharePoint 2013 called device channels. So device channels allow you to target specific master pages and CSS for uh, specific devices. And so what you do is you configure a uh, master page in CSS for specific uh, user agent strings um, which are presented. Um, this is different than a responsive design. Responsive design is one where you know the site is really built to present itself on a variety of screen sizes. So as the SharePoint site shrinks up for say a tablet or a mobile phone, it's actually sort of morphing, it's changing as the screen size reduces and that's different than device channels which are really like discrete specific you know experiences for specific devices gotcha so we disable what's built in start starting to think about these uh, what what type of types of devices we're trying to target with this that's right that's right yeah and that is important um, you know on a recent project that I worked on you know we decided that we would ta um, target um, of course, desktop, mm -hmm. and then you're targeting tablet and mobile phones. And you know, we chose to go, you know, try and find the extreme. So the, you know, on the mobile phone, you're thinking of, the, or we targeted the iPhone four because okay. that's the smallest screen size. Um, you know, in the middle were tablets, and you have to keep in mind that tablets are both uh, landscape and portrait. Okay. So those may have a different experience. Your content's going to render separately, and then of course, uh, desktop. Gotcha. So talk me through, um, once you've disabled it and you're starting to, to make some changes, what are some of the technologies involved with this? Any, any further steps we need to make to get ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. So it's good at this point to think about or to be aware um, of what is going to be changed in your SharePoint environment. So what are, what are the scope of app dev uh, changes that I'm going to make in the SharePoint environment to support um, responsive design? And those are... Um, not entirely limited to, but include you know master page updates. So unlike the device channels, you're not going to have a number of master pages. You're going to have one master page. Um, there's also um, going to be uh, layout pages, changes to those. And I highly recommend the use of uh, publishing sites with layout pages versus team sites with web part pages. And the reason for that 
because it's a lot easier for us to change the um, the layout of a layout page than it is a web part page. Gotcha. On our, on our most recent project, 99% uh, of the sites were uh, publishing sites with layout pages. Now we did have some team sites mm -hmm. and we were able, and I'll talk a little bit later about some of the ways you can kind of poke into those and continue to make those responsive. And then the third piece, you know, that you're going to be updating, of course, are um, CSS. Um, so really what you're going to be doing there is overriding, in large part, um, you know, CSS styles that are provided by default um, from, from SharePoint. Gotcha. Gotcha. Let me back up here just a second. We talked where, as far as we, we, we've said, sort of use SharePoint in general. We're talking about on-premise SharePoint. I, I guess there's a couple different versions that we're dealing with. I know it depends on the project, but we're talking, you're focusing primarily on like on SharePoint 2013 on-premise. Is that is that typically what we're dealing with? It could really be either one. Okay. So the um, from a technology standpoint, the most recent project that I'm um, referring to was an on-premise um, okay. version of SharePoint 2013. Okay. Um, these changes could be made in uh, Office 365. Um, the only caveat to that is, you know, you do need to be aware of, you know, Microsoft's guidance um, for um, upgrades. So they may push an upgrade out at any time. If you have your own master page, uh -huh. you made a copy, and now you're using your own master page, and any updates to master pages that they may have pushed out, well, you're just going to miss those. You know, um, the ideal case, if you're so in... So as soon as you do a custom master page, then that's sort of the one that you move forward with, and if they make any changes, you don't get those changes. You don't get those. because Shut they, the front door. Right. They will have upgraded, you know, the, the, the default master page um, for that publishing site. You know, in SharePoint Online, our recommendation is, you know, if at all possible, you know, you're keeping that master page the same. Uh -huh. um, you're more focusing on uh, CSS updates. Okay. And you're more focusing on, you know, something that can be accomplished through a theme. So you're a little bit more limited, um, but, you know, you're, you're being more friendly to the, you know, really the free upgrades that come with uh, Office 365. So I don't, have you talked, to, talked at all about like Bootstrap and jQuery and... Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bootstrap. So you know, I'm going to bring down. those up like I know what I'm talking about. That's good. That's so go good. Ahead. It okay. sounds like you do. Yes. Um, you know, when we talk responsive and mobile, um, Bootstrap is usually the first thing that um, that come to mind, um, and Bootstrap is the first place to start with um, making a SharePoint site responsive. And for those aren't, who aren't um, familiar with Bootstrap, um, you know, the good news is you don't have to become an expert with it to be productive. Um, you know, there are many simple features that are provided in Bootstrap, and the simplest is, is kind of describing that, um, you know, Bootstrap is designed to provide a 12-column layout for your site. So imagine that um, you're looking at a desktop uh, presentation of your site, and imagine dividing it up into 12 columns, and you can combine those columns together. So, for example, you could have uh, four columns, which are you know, really uh, three columns wide each. And then what you're saying is that for different screen widths, I want those columns to stack on top of each other. Mm -hmm. So as the screen get, becomes more narrow and you have these, say, three columns uh, at some point and you decide what that point is, they stack on top of each other. Um, so in Bootstrap, it provides a, a handful of other handy utilities. Um, you know, it, it uh, you can hide and show certain columns. So let's say we have a rendering of a web part, which is, you know, has certain data on it. Like maybe it, it's a listing of users and it has their name, title, I don't know, phone number. And then for a mobile, maybe it'll just have their name and phone number and we'll okay. leave, the, leave the title off. So um, that's kind of the simple um, of Bootstrap and that's really the, the best place to start. And what you're gonna be doing there is, you know, open your master page add a reference to Bootstrap, and then you're going to start decorating uh, HTML elements that are in your master page with Bootstrap classes. Decorating? How festive. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, you know, Bootstrap, that's going to get you started. That's a real quick, um, you know, easy way to get, um, you know, really any site responsive. Um, it's a lot faster than... Um, 
you know, than you might see with a standard kind of ASP.NET application. But with SharePoint, you're going to have to go a few steps further. And the reason for that is because we don't really have control over everything that's being rendered. So the next step is, you know, we're going to have to get in and override, you know, CSS. Okay. So SharePoint may be saying a column is a specific width or SharePoint. One of the things that we battled with a lot was the padding. So, you know, as the screen width becomes more narrow, we want to constrain that padding uh -huh. between elements to give a little bit more space. Um, and then uh, another aspect are um, what are called media rules. So media rules uh -huh. allow us to specify, you know, specific CSS attributes for certain screen widths. Okay. So that comes into play, you know, padding is a pretty good example. So for, you know, desktop widths, maybe we'll have the default padding, but then for uh, phone widths, you know, we'll constrain that padding. Gotcha. And then um, jQuery. We talked about that. At yes. All. Yeah. So jQuery is um, jQuery and JavaScript. Um, you know, I have to admit that's an, it's not something that I was expecting to get into when making a SharePoint site responsive, but uh, it ended up being, you know, really a key and highly useful tool. Um, and, and kind of the net of it is that, you know, because we don't have control over everything that's being rendered in SharePoint, uh, you know, we use jQuery to, you know, select elements that are on the page and maybe add bootstrap classes, maybe we're adjusting the width um, we had jQuery was used to constrain images. Okay. You know, <clears throat> images are, end up being a challenge because images will tend to push out the boundaries of an HTML element. So you've got to find some way to get those images um, to constrain, and, and jQuery and JavaScript is one way to do it. Uh, we had an interesting, one interesting application of um, jQuery and JavaScript was, uh, you know, with this particular site design, we decided, you're familiar with the quick launch, Mm -hmm. in SharePoint. That's on the left-hand side of the page normally. Well, for our mobile design, we decided to do two things. Take that quick launch, and instead of on the left-hand side of the screen, we put it to the top. Okay. And then the second thing we decided was that anything that was in the quick launch except for subsites mm -hmm. would be removed. So what we're doing there is we're allowing users who are on a mobile device, we're saying, well, let's not clutter them up with lists and libraries. We'll just let them navigate from from site to site, and they can see the home page and uh, dashboard style information that's on each home page. And that was accomplished with jQuery because we need some, you know, that JavaScript logic to figure out, okay, here's this link. Well, what is it? Is this a subsite or is it a list or a library? So, my goodness, it sounds like, I mean, this, this <laughs> sounds like there's things in SharePoint that you're sort of having to. To a little bit fight, I'll call it fight against, and make make sort of change around. Um, and then there's a couple of technologies. Or were there like, um, is there were there like um, certain tools that you were using, like browser tools to go inspect sort of what who had control and those types of things. That is, yep, I know I yep. deal with it on our public site is is trying to figure out who's setting what and and yep. digging into that. So are there certain tools that you end up using when you're doing responsive design with SharePoint? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Chrome, uh, the Chrome um, developer tools is a great place to start. Uh -huh. um, you know, all of the browsers have developer tools, but um, Chrome is the best one to start with because it has the ability to render um, for uh, mobile devices. So uh -huh. you can actually, there's a little icon there. Um, you click and it kind of goes into a mobile view and then you can actually select from uh, maybe a dozen um, different devices. The iPhone is one of them. Does it just change the user agent? Is that what it's doing? It does. It changes the user agent okay. and it also changes, of course, the screen size. Okay. You know, yeah. to be the appropriate screen size. Um, we found, I would say, you know, maybe 90% of issues on uh, mobile devices we found uh, through testing with the um, Chrome uh, developer tools. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I highly recommend that, 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 that folks are sure to have, you know, a sampling of the actual devices, um, preferably across um, the three, you know, major OSs, you know, iPhone, Android, and uh, Windows Phone. Um, you know, for us, uh, you know, iPhone was the friendliest. We had the fewest issues on that one, or at least the fewest issues that were not discovered, you know, through the Chrome developer tools. 
Um, Android ended up being the second friendliest, and then we really, uh, funny enough, we had the most issues on Windows Phone. Mm. So, and you have some issues like like one of the basics and, and fairly easy ones is that um, you know on a desktop experience you're used to the hover. Yeah. Well, there's no hover, you know, on your mobile devices. So you know you have to sort of change those to be click. And okay. So they actually touch those things instead of uh, uh, you know uh, hovering over them. Was for the testing. It seems like that you want to <clears throat> dedicate some good time towards testing and, and did. Did we have somebody come in in particular to do like Brandon come in and help out with the testing for this? And yes, yeah, okay. yeah. So Brandon um, was a was a key part, um, you know, definitely uh, in in the testing effort. Um, and we had him configured with a um, you know his own local, of course, SharePoint um, 2013 environment, um, and he had uh, you know testing across those devices. We had um, you know iPads and the Galaxy. Uh, tablets and so forth so um, uh, yeah probably can't say enough good things about the testing effort there and really being sure to um, you know you you, 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 you you can't really make assumptions on it yeah um, or you can't make too many assumptions we'll put it that way interesting anything to wrap this up at all anything more you want to add Besides, if you're doing something crazy like doing responsive with SharePoint, you should contact us, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we so we've been through it a few times, um, you know, and can definitely save you some time. You know, I think w one thing that I'll add is, um, you know, on this most recent project, um, you know, having good an site analytics and site usage data, um, you know, was was really important, and it was really important for two reasons. Um, one is, you know, constraining the scope of the project. So we mm -hmm. can find out, you know, what are people really using? Yeah. If nobody goes to a particular page, let's not um, put the work into making it uh, uh, mobile enabled. Now, what might end up happening is, and largely it does, through your work, the site may end up being mobile enabled because mm -hmm. it just is by default to the other work that you're doing. And of course, you know, lucky you, it works. But if nobody's going to that site, you know, kind of recognize that and don't put the effort into testing it and, uh, you know, app dev on a site that nobody's visiting. Uh, you know, the next aspect of having that site. What did you use data, for, I'm sorry to, to interrupt, what did you use for an, for analytics? So this site was using Google Analytics. Okay, so you, you had just the embed, embedded in their code and looked at uh, yep. through Google Analytics, okay. Yeah, and yeah. interesting story So um, about that is that um, there's a CodePlex project for um, embedding Google Analytics into SharePoint. Okay. Um, they these folks have been using it for quite some time and with um, great results. Uh, however, we found an issue with that um, project, and it only uh, uh, showed itself on on Windows Phone. So we had to make a little update and work around that by taking you know what was that Google Annex JavaScript, taking it out of the sort of site collection feature that comes with Google, this Google Analytics uh, solution by default and adding it um, ourselves to the okay. master page. Okay. And that worked around what was really an authentication issue um, only on Windows Phone. But, you know, a thing that, to, to, last thing to mention about Google Analytics is that, or any analytics that you choose, you know, a benefit is that when this project is complete, you know, and you have your launch and you do some marketing around the site, you can find out you know, are people really using the site with their mobile devices, and which pages are they using? Mm -hmm. Maybe they branched out beyond, you know, the site usage, the usage patterns that you imagine that they would use. Cool. Well, thank you for taking the time to share this. I, I appreciate your uh, sharing with folks uh, some insights on how to how to make your SharePoint sites responsive. And that's neat that this also that you mentioned this works for both on-premise and, and Office 365. That's very, right. That's very right. cool. Great. Awesome. Thanks for having me. You betcha. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.